Welcome to the Whiskey Roll. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. And what do we got? We've got a whiskey. Well, first, let's go ahead and get out of the way a duplicate from Mike and Beth Gaynor. Ooh, ooh. We reviewed this whiskey a while back, New Southern Revival Bourbon Whiskey from Highwire Distilling. So this is going in as Mike and Beth Gaynor. You benevolent bastard. <laughs> I don't have your timing down yet for Benevolent Bastard. That's basically the same, but... Yeah, I, well, there's got to be a different run-up to it. We've got to come up yeah. with a new run-up. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the, that's the Magnificent Bastard's run-up. Yeah, yeah, we need a different... Different, yeah. different You, Benevolent Bastard. It's like no, easy that's... listening jazz. <laughs> you, Benevolent... <laughs> that's all I, I don't know what we're doing. Just, I just know there's a lot of swaying and snapping. A lot of swaying. A lot, a lot of, swaying a lot of finger snapping for some reason. And the arch the eyebrow. Right, we actually are drinking a gift yes. from Magnificent Bastard Pat Kane. Pat Kane, you Magnificent Bastard! Uh, this is... I, I need a... I know, I'm going to pour you some. This is... Cinder Dick. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whose dick did they cinder? Well, so <laughs> it's historical. Yeah. They like their historical names. Okay. This is from a distillery in Durango called Durango Craft Spirits, and this is a straight bourbon whiskey, two years old. They actually made it. Okay. It's not sourced. There's a there's a nice creaminess on top of that. There is. I was about to say there's this nice mellow kind of rounded. Buttercream mixed yeah. with that corn dust and yeah, so you got like the bourbon flavor, the, the classic bourbon flavors in the background of that nose. Then you got like this nice, sweet, creamy layer on top. It's almost vanilla cream. Almost. It's almost yeah. Like the inside of a Cadbury's cream egg. Yeah, where it's like very sugared. I can totally see that. And then you also get there's an ethanol layer in there there too. Yeah, it's sure. shiny. What's the uh, what's the proof? The proof on this is forty seven. Okay. All right, so that's a proof where you, that would lead you to believe they're dialing in the palate. Oh, that's much, it's as sweet as the nose smells. It is. It almost matches the nose identically. I find that to be so rare, I actually kind of like that. Yeah. Like it's so often, your nose and your palate are two different things. And even when we talked to Jared when we were hanging out with him at Balconis, you know, yeah. a lot of the blenders talk about, you can either go for nose or you can go for palate as your priority. Like they both have to be good. Right. But you, you can, you know, different people prefer different things. Well, and we were talking to Heather Green and she does a lot of judging in whiskey competitions. And uh, we asked her like, how, how what's the actual um, steps you take towards a whiskey? Is it mostly on the nose, mostly on the palate? At least for her, mm -hmm. she spends the vast majority of the time on the nose. Yeah. So if you're dialing something in to be uh, put into competitions, hopefully get some awards and use that as your marketing, then nose is, Probably a good way to go, but this is really, really, the quality of the nose is not disappointed by the quality of the taste. And again, that cream note, that sweet cream note does show up on the taste, just like the nose. I like that. It's very sugary though. You have to be ready for a sweet whiskey. I'm going back and it just stays sweet and sugary for me. Mm -hmm. What's the, do we have any idea of the age on this? Because at least two years, at least two, one okay. barrel evidently. Yeah. It's not incredibly aged. You can tell there's some flavors in here that are a little bit young, but this, tastes, but they're nice flavors, nice young flavors. We've got two year old whiskey that aged a little bit in Texas. This tastes significantly younger than that. Yeah. So I think that climate they're getting in Durango. Remember Durango is what Southwest Colorado on the way to Utah. Okay. And, um, Hey, you know how but that's like North desert climate. You know how Daniel has a story for everything? Yeah. Like any place, any action, any event, any person. Let me tell you about this anecdote. I have an anecdote for Colorado. It's the best the anecdote. The whole state? The best anecdote in the world. Look, it doesn't involve the restaurant, does it? You need to sit down. This is a, a long tail, a yarn I'm about to weave. Okay. Fit for the ages. Are you ready? Bring it on. I lived there for a year when I was real young. Colorado Springs, I'm guessing? Denver. Denver. That's the end of my story. Huh. It's before the weed. Otherwise, how old were you? I would have stuck around. <laughs> how old were you? It's like first grade. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you don't have any memory story. No, I, I have a memory of um, me going to my backyard and the snow being like higher than my waist. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't get that. I want to take the boys to snow someday. They've never really seen it. 
Okay, so in terms of the, the specific classic bourbon flavors that are in here. Mm. Nah, this is actually closer, reminding me of the Firestone Robertson uh, blended Texas whiskey. TX blended. Uh, what I think it's TX not blend. as sweet. Well, and it's also... But it's headed that direction. Also, the vanilla on that TX blended is right. just so concentrated. Yeah, that's it's Mach 10, but this is like... near vanilla ice cream. In the bourbon category, this is on that side of the flavor wheel. I would agree. I think I was prepared for a little bit more... Uh, maybe, maybe brown sugar on the nose. I think that may be a differentiating element from the nose to the taste. I'm adding um, a little water. Yeah. Feel do, free. Do to, I have uh, a bottle? Is that my bottle? No, that's your bottle right there. So, uh, Cinder Dick. Cinder Dick. Are you ready? What are you doing? Oh, Lord. Drop the. I'm getting the ass shot on our camera. There we go. No, but it's upside down. Oh. I got Still the upside. Any day now. No, it's upside down. Oh, we're going to be here for. Ah, oh, it's upside down. I got this. Right. Look, this is, this look. is happening. This is happening. Look, this is happening. You can shut up. Son of a bitch. Three days later. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, so. I don't know why we started that. Cinder Dick, you want to know where this comes from? <laughs> yeah, I do. So back in the day in the railroad, which sort of built the town Durango, um, along with a lot of Western towns, uh, there were, you know, thieves and robbers and things on trains. And in the era of the West, there came the, Alan Pinkerton founded the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Oh, yes. It's basically, Remember the Pinkertons? Yes. And a lot of them would hide out on trains. Ruthless. As uh, in order to sort of stop robberies and things from happening. Mm -hmm. And they got the nickname Cinder Dicks. What? Because coal train, coal fired trains, right. Cinder, yeah. and Pinkerton, uh, detective. Oh, Dick. detective. Yeah, detective. Cinder Dick. Yeah. Also, a nickname for what they did with their free time. They burned Probably their gotta dicks cut off. That out. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they've named all of their releases after something historical. Right? But when I hear Durango, all I think of is the Guy Clark song. Standing in the rain in Durango, right side of wrong, there's wrong a, side of gone. There's a cherry note that's threatening to show up on the taste, but it doesn't really come into its own. Almost. Yeah, it never same. gets away from vanilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanilla and then, gosh, it's not quite a woody element. There, there's something that's not like desserty sweetness, but it's not wood oak. It's not, well, I guess it's, it's uh, redundant. It's not oakiness. Um, it's not wood oak. Yeah. It's a different kind of oak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that ends the review. You got some questions. No, should, dude, dude, there's a note in here. Is this a review channel or no. is this a note channel? You're obviously Review new. channel or note channel? You're obviously With new. your words. You're new here. <laughs> <laughs> you must be new here. <laughs> you don't understand what it is that we do. No, but help me pick, help, dude, because there's something that's not desserty sweetness in here. Help me, help me pick that out. Then I will grant your request. Of reading that. Uh, it's got to be the rye content because it's that wicker note mm. in the nose, not in the palate. I think like a, almost a dry hay for me. Almost. We got Skibby one. Skibby. It's Skibby one. Uh, why hasn't Rex jacked both glasses yet? Is social distancing the fabled mooch bane? The fabled. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that he used the word mooch bane. Fabled mooch the bane. The fabled mooch bane. <laughs> it turns out it's hard to mooch when you have to maintain social distancing. <laughs> the, the I mythical, mean, that really is. Like, that's, that's kryptonite right there. The mythical mooch bane of the law. <laughs> Our forefathers foretold. Of, of mooch you, know, bane. you know fabled mooch bane is going to show up in a script at you some point You must ascend now. high into the mountains <laughs> to acquire the purest of all mooch banes. I was watching the Doctor Who episode last night when they met Shakespeare, and half the episode is Doctor Who making a statement that's quoting Shakespeare, yeah. and Shakespeare going, oh, that's good, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Goo, S86. Yeah. Love the reviews, guys. Great work on the social distancing, too. Just wanted to know if the taste of a whiskey changes from batch to batch. Yup. Yes. If you reviewed a whiskey a few years ago, then again today, would there be much variation? So, for big distilleries that are aiming for 
Yes. Uh, consistency. And they have a lot of barrels to choose from. They have uh, thousands, thousands yeah. of barrels. To choose from. They also have a master distiller and there's basically a team of people whose job is to uh, to sample these barrels and combine them in a way so they can find that consistency that people have already shown to know and love in the marketplace. Smaller distillers, though, even medium-sized distillers, yeah. don't necessarily have that ability. So think of it as this way. The smaller the distillery, the smaller the barrel selection they have to choose from, the more likely there's going to be a, at least a mild variance, if not a large variance, from batch to batch on the releases of the whiskey. Yeah, by large variance, we're meaning like, you know, up to 20 percent if we're going to right. apply you know a number which is really difficult when it comes to subjective stuff right but like a 20 percent variance from barrel to barrel uh but we're kind of excited about this idea of leaning into that the same way that um wineries are doing with you know years and yeah it's like vintage. that was a good one it may never happen again yeah the next one's a new different one and i think you know whiskey can be impacted up to a point based on the weather and the seasons and the climate and whatnot um wine very much affected by the seasons and you can taste it in the actual wine i think more often than not a lot of the variance that comes with whiskey is often happening in that barrel there seems to be a yeah. lot of variety from barrel to barrel yeah the grain is not i mean the grain does have differences and the people who are harvesting the grain and the they'll tell you yes oh, yeah the, the rainfall and the sun that changes all the chemical makeup and all of the things that happen in grain yep but what you taste in a bottle, the drastic differences are almost entirely barrel influence. Yeah, no, the grain can, basically we're talking about terroir. Right. Uh, we did an entire episode on the Whiskey Tribe channel where we went to Ireland and we started exploring terroir in whiskey with Waterford. Mm -hmm. And in our experience, yes, you can absolutely tell the difference with the grains because we're tasting new make to new make from fields that were just miles apart, kilometers apart. Pretty cool. Uh, but then once it gets into a barrel, it's another element that's gonna change things quite a bit. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>